Hey everyone, I'm Terry Moran. Here are some of the top stories we're following today on ABC News Live. President Biden in Mexico facing questions now about classified documents found at his former office. What we're learning about those documents and why this case is different from the raid at Mar-a-Lago. And deadly storms hammer the West Coast, the latest on the drenching rain, triggering devastating floods and dangerous mudslides. Plus the new fallout from Prince Harry's book, what he tells ABC's Michael Strahan about the queen consort, Camilla. But first, we do have some breaking news. Uh, former Trump Organization CFO Alan Weisselberg has just been sentenced to five months in prison after pleading guilty to 15 different tax crimes last year. Weisselberg had worked at the Trump Organization since the mid-1980s, right up until his arrest. Weisselberg had agreed to testify against the Trump Organization as part of that plea deal and pay about $2 million in tax penalties. He was handcuffed and taken into custody right after the sentencing. So far, Weisselberg is the only person charged in the Manhattan's three-year-long investigation into Donald Trump's family business. Now, the Justice Department has launched a preliminary review after President Biden's lawyers revealed documents marked classified were found in an office space that he used as a private citizen after he served as vice president. The White House says it's cooperating with the Justice Department and the National Archives, which were notified the same day the documents were found back in November. The Senate Intelligence Committee Chairman Mark Warner has now requested a briefing on the classified documents. So the question is, how classified are these documents? And do they put national security at risk? To discuss this, let's bring in ABC News investigative reporter Catherine Falders, ABC News White House correspondent Karen Traffers. She's traveling with the president in Mexico right now. So Catherine, start with you up on Capitol Hill. How are lawmakers re reacting to uh, the news of classified documents found at Biden's old office? No, well, look, as you just mentioned, you saw that statement from Mark Warner right there. They want a briefing on this. They want to know the nature of those classified documents. What were the classification markings on those documents? I think there's also a lot of questions surrounding how did they get moved from the White House uh, into that personal office of Biden's at the time? And what are the circumstances surrounding how they got there? What is the nature of them? What is the topic? All of this is something that lawmakers on the House and the Senate side want answers to, Terry. Understandably. And... Yeah, this obviously takes us back to the controversial raid of former President Trump's mm. uh, Mar-a-Lago estate. The FBI there seized classified documents after a long dispute over uh, what, how much classified information uh, Trump had down there. How does this differ from that? Well, it's different in the sense that when Biden's lawyers discovered these documents, they say they immediately notified the National Archives and the Department of Justice that day. They were then in the possession of the government the following day. Uh, the case of Trump, there were lots of months of discussions back and forth. Investigators wanted these documents. Trump wouldn't give them back. He claims that they were his documents. In fact, when he did give some of them back, he had his lawyers sign a statement that certified that there were no more classified documents left at, at Mar-a-Lago when, in fact, in fact, there were. So the difference here, uh, it appears, so far at least, is what happened after the fact, what happened after those documents were discovered. And, and Karen, the White House really doesn't have a choice uh, here. They've got to cooperate with the Department of Justice mm -hmm. preliminary review, and Republicans are very interested in opening investigations uh, into the in the House into some members of the Biden family. How is the White House reacting to all this? This can't be good news for them. Yeah, and they're not saying very much at this point. We got that statement last night from the special counsel's office that laid out much of the details that Catherine just said, that when these documents were discovered, they immediately alerted the National Archives, and within a day, they were in the possession of the government. So the White House is indicating that right from the start, they have shown that they are willing to cooperate, and they've had every intention of cooperating on this issue, very different uh, than what the former president did. And, you know, when you look at some of the things that this president has said about that case about how Donald Trump and his team have handled it, he has said things like totally irresponsible uh, of what Donald Trump did. So, you know, today, though, we are waiting to hear from President Biden on this. Terry, he has been asked numerous questions about these classified documents last night when he was in a meeting with the Mexican president. Today, when he was in a meeting with the Canadian prime minister, he has not answered these questions. Today, there will be a press conference at the conclusion of this summit. I think you can guarantee this is 
is going to come up in some capacity, and we'll see how the president addresses these, this issue. Yeah, at some point he's going to have to answer those questions. So, so Catherine, let's talk about how the Justice Department is proceeding here. Uh, President Biden is Attorney General Merrick Garland's boss, uh, and that complicates these kinds of investigations all the time. The department's not launched a formal investigation. They're calling it a preliminary review. How are they proceeding here? Well, you just said it there. There's a preliminary in review. This isn't a formal investigation in any way, but they just want those questions answered uh, about the security of the space where the documents were, for example, how they got there. That's what DOJ is looking at at the current moment in time. Of course, that's different than what we've been talking about, the Trump investigation, where it's a uh, criminal investigation and there is a grand jury specifically impaneled to review the circumstances surrounding Trump's handling of documents. All right, Catherine. Karen, thanks very much for that. Okay. We're back. Now to the latest on those devastating storms. They're just slamming the West Coast day after day, week after week. The death toll from all that has now risen to at least 16 people, and more rain is hammering the state today. Storms have already triggered devastating flooding and dangerous mudslides, knocked out power to hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses. Dramatic video, take a look at this, shows a rock slide with giant boulders. This is what these rains are doing down there. Look at that. That's in Fresno, California, San Joaquin Valley. And more footage from the air shows the widespread flooding in Gilroy, south, south of San Jose, waves of water trapping vehicles, washing out roads. ABC's Matt Rivers has the latest from Hard Hit Aptos in Santa Cruz County. Rescue and recovery efforts underway after those devastating floods on the West Coast. Two people rescued from this giant sinkhole in Chatsworth. And in Valverde, a rescue team saving a man who witnesses say was stuck in his vehicle for over an hour. A big tree came down the riverbed, grabbed him by the front, and put him pretty much where they're at right now. Santa Barbara County has already seen more than 13 inches of rain in the last two days. The entire town of Montecito was placed under evacuation orders Monday. The rain has caused localized flooding throughout the county. Massive rock slides causing road closures over in Fresno. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, around 90% of Californians are under flood watches or warnings. All of the homes and businesses in this neighborhood of Aptos, California, were forced to evacuate. Many of these homes are actually vacation rentals, now with flood damage and without customers. And parts of Northern California are bracing for some seven feet of snow over the next two days. And Terry, this series of storms so powerful, it damaged homes along this entire beachfront road here in Aptos. Homeowners taking advantage of what is now a brief lull in this severe weather to try and clean up as best they can. Terry? What a challenge there. Matt Rivers, thanks very much for that report. And let's bring in ABC News meteorologist Melissa Griffin for more on this. So, Melissa, as I said, these, these are just catastrophic. It's kind of amazing to watch nature do this. Uh, what's happening there? What's the biggest threat now for all those Americans in that region? Yeah, Terry, it really is incredible to see such devastating and damaging images across California and still over 30 million Americans are under those flood alerts across much of the state and this atmospheric river, these series of storms, just not over yet. Some of the biggest impacts I think are going to be happening over the next couple of days as more systems move through is that widespread flooding. We've already seen over a foot of rain in many locations across California, so rapid river rises, flash flooding expected to continue. Those mud and rock slides going to be very dangerous, especially if those rocks and boulders can come across roads. Down trees, we've seen 80 plus miles per hour winds, especially in the higher elevations. So again, that will remain an issue because the ground is so saturated there. More rain plus that wind on top of it, down trees, damage to infrastructure, and power outages expected as well. And we ask, when is this ever going to end? Well, a brief lull again across parts of California today, but look at this satellite. You can see way out there that next storm getting ready to hit California as we head into tomorrow with more rain and more snow. And here's how much we can expect. At least over the next seven days, an additional five to 10 inches of rain, especially across Northern California, including hard hit San Francisco Bay Area. But look at that. Over the last two weeks, over 100 
100 inches of snow has already fallen in the Sierras. We're expecting an additional two to six feet of snow over the next several, several days as these systems just continue to slam the state with really no, no relief in sight just yet, Terry. Staggering totals there. Now, that's an area we associate with drought, right? What do all this rain and snow do for California's drought? Well, you know, we really want to see these events to be more spread out because when they happen right after each other, that's where we have these dangerous impacts. You see here over the last two days, over 16 inches of rain has fallen in Ventura and Santa Barbara counties. That's why we've seen such devastating flooding. We don't want all of that at once, but we are seeing a little bit of relief in this drought. You see those dark reds? That's exceptional drought. This was at this time last week. Now, you put all that rain on top of that, you see those dark reds completely fade away, and we're seeing exceptional drought at 0% now in California, extreme down to 27%. Now we get the new drought monitor that comes out on this Thursday. So we'll see what these rains this week and how that impacts the drought in California over the next few days. Wow, just an amazing scene. Melissa Griffin, thanks very much for that. Well, coming up, you've been served, sort of. The latest complaint against New York Republican Congressman George Santos was hand delivered to him in person by his Democratic colleagues from the Empire State. The details right after this. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.